I'm Ann Dart. I'm Tracy Stormy. And I'm Kathy Knight. And together we are It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club, a podcast for mystery lovers. Welcome. Welcome. If you enjoy our show, please consider contributing to the Dark and Stormy Patreon. By becoming a patron, you will help us create better and quality content. There are also benefits to becoming a patron, such as exclusive content and Dark and Stormy merchandise. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash darkandstormybc. Check our website for the link. We appreciate any and all contributions. Thank you. Welcome to episode 137. It's a spooky Halloween cozy episode. Welcome. Okay, well, I'm going to start with Witch Hunt. It is the first in the Full Moon Mystery Series by Kate Conti, I think is how you say her name. It's put out by Kensington Books, and it came out June 30th this year, 2020. As fall has arrived in our neck of the woods, I was in the mood for a spooky story. Lucky for me, the first in the Full Moon series of Cozy Mysteries was on my bookshelf. In Witch Hunt, we are introduced to Violet Mooney. Violet is a young, independent woman living in North Harbor, Connecticut, where she runs the Full Moon Crystal Shop. She wakes up one Monday morning with a weird feeling that something undefined is off kilter. Violet has a busy week ahead because, besides her usual shop duties, she and some friends have scheduled a healing circle for the weekend. The day barely progresses when Carla Fernandez, a town council member, accosts her in the local coffee shop with a bad attitude and a finger pointing in Violet's face. Carla accuses Violet of planning to conduct a seance and wants to run the voodoo, quote unquote, shop out of town. Violet continues on with her day, doesn't let it bother her, but the strange feeling lingers. After a mishap in the crystal store, Violet goes home and naps until the police wake her up, knocking on her door, asking her for an alibi. Carla Fernandez has been found dead with Violet's scarf nearby, and the whole coffee shop witnessed that morning's altercation. While Violet sets about trying to prove her innocence by finding the true culprit, her long-estranged mother, Fiona, arrives unexpectedly on the scene with a half-sister, Zoe, that Violet didn't even know she had. On top of that shocker, Fiona reveals that she and Zoe are witches and that Violet is a witch as well. This is a charming story that introduces a plot line ripe with possibilities for future installments. We meet Violet's friends and an assortment of town residents who I'm sure we'll meet again. Contrary to most cozies, Violet's love interest is not one of the police officers. Shocker. Oh, wow. I didn't think Is that, that even was... allowed? I, I didn't think so. Well, apparently it's the owner of the Irish pub. There is, of course, a fat orange cat, Monty, who acts as Violet's familiar. This is, of course, a paranormal mystery. Yet, even so, some of the situations stretch the bounds of credulity and seem too cutesy by half. But that's the nature of cozies, I suppose. This author kept the sense of suspense going throughout, and I did not guess the killer's identity. All in all, a pleasant story just in time for Halloween. Now, when you say you did not guess the end, were there clues enough? Or was it one of these that kind of threw in something at the end that threw you for a loop? I think as the story progressed, there were some clues thrown in that were pointing in that direction, but not exactly. Ah. So it, it was it was pretty well done, I think. Very good. Sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. Not bad. I mean, for a light, like I said, pleasant enough for this time of year. Well, and that was definitely right up your alley with the paranormal. And definitely, I love witches. <laughs> well, Kate <laughs> Conti is the pseudonym of Liz Mugavero. She serves on the Sisters in Crime New England board and is a member of Sisters in Crime National, Mystery Writers of America, and the Cat Writers Association. Oh. Who knew there was even such a thing? Wow. <laughs> she currently lives in Connecticut with her cats and dog. Kate is the author of the Cat Cafe Mystery Series. As Liz Mugavero, she writes the 
Positively Organic Mystery Series. Ha! Get that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, these play on words with these cozies. Her website is kateconti.com, which is Kate with a C, A T E. Conti is C O N T E. Very good. Yeah. I like witches too, so I think I'll be checking that one out. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good series. I'll be happy to share my copy with you. Okay. okay. My book is Death of a Wicked Witch by Lee Hollis. It's number 13 in the Haley Pal Food and Cocktail Mystery Series, published by Kensington Books. Before we get to the book, I think I'm going to tell you a little bit about Lee Hollis, because I think this is very interesting. Lee Hollis is the pen name for a brother and sister writing team. That fascinates me because I could no more write with my brother. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That would not be a pretty thought. I'm sorry. Oh, that would not be good. Kudos to them for able to do that. But they're interesting characters in their own right. Rick Kopp is the brother of the team. He is a screenwriter and wrote for the show Golden Girls. And he also co-wrote the movie The Brady Bunch. So he's doing okay in that arena. And his sister, Lee Simonson, is an award-winning food and cocktail columnist. The protagonist, I would say, is kind of based on her because that's exactly what Haley is in the books. In this series, it is set in Bar Harbor, Maine, which is one of my absolute favorite places in the world. If you ever get a chance to go, definitely eat at the Reading Room restaurant. It's to die for. Haley Pal is a food writer for the local paper. And since this is the 13th in the series, I had never read any ones previously. I went back to the first book just to kind of familiarize myself with Haley. The series starts out with her being a single mom and just starting her career with the local paper as a food writer. In this installment, number 13, she has a new husband, Bruce, and her daughter, Gemma, is a young adult with a boyfriend ready to propose to her. This, I think, was very well written. I did figure it out. It's one of those books that the journey is worth it. So even if you know who did it, it was it was worth the journey, worth the read. This book did not follow your typical cozy formula. It was actually a very likable character that was killed. I didn't think that was allowed either. Hmm. This woman was a newcomer to the town. Her name was Trudy Lancaster. Trudy and her husband, Ted, had just moved to Bar Harbor, and he was posed to become the new minister of the local church. She owned a food truck called Wicked Witches Sandwiches, which I think is a very clever name for New England. And sandwiches. And, That's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. So she is found dead, locked in her food truck. There were many possible suspects in this book, anywhere from a competing food truck owner to a lecherous retiring pastor. Haley had become friends with Trudy. With the help of her daughter and husband, she sets out to find out what happened to her new friend. This is all surrounding the town's annual costumed witches ball, which Led a whole new dimension because suspects were hard to identify because everybody had a costume on and many of them had witches costumes because it's the witches ball. Makes sense. I have to say, I realized something after reading this book. I think I've been reading the wrong cozies because I've kind of given cozies a bad name. And this one actually kept me very entertained. The mystery was good. I think I am a new fan of at least Lee Hollis, and maybe I just need to find more mysteries like this because I really enjoyed it. Well, I like a lot of cozies, but a lot of times some of the authors don't seem to work very hard at getting there. Yeah, they kind of take shortcuts from point. And those anger me, but 
When I find a good one, I like them a lot. And I also have to say that with this being the 13th in the series, I knew exactly who everybody was. They did a great job of keeping you in the storyline. One thing that helped with that is every few chapters, they did a chapter called Island Food and Spirits. And that was kind of a little story set by itself that was a bad past and they always ended those with a food recipe and a cocktail recipe from Haley's Kitchen. So those kind of gave me a view into who Haley really is. I will be reading more and I think actually she has a new one coming out very soon. So, you know, these cozy writers pump these things out pretty quickly. You don't have to wait a year usually to read the next one have to report on is called What Not to Wear to a Graveyard by Deborah Senefelder. This is number four in the Resale Boutique Mystery Series. This book features Kelly Quinn, who has come to this small town, settle her grandmother's estate, and her grandmother ran a local boutique consignment shop. Kelly wants to remake it into her own, so she wants to do more upscale clothing, and she wants to make it more modern. One of the things that she's going to do is have a fashion shoot in a graveyard, because in this town, they have a lot of centuries-old gravestones and it's kind of spooky. So she has to go to the graveyard to scope out where they want to do this fashion shoot. In the very beginning of the story, you hear about a dog that's gone missing. One of the town is offering a reward for their little dog that disappeared. Well, when Kelly goes to scoping out the graveyard, she finds the little dog in the graveyard. So she takes it back to the owner who has offered a $1,000 reward. She's all excited because she's going to have $1,000 to put into her new store. When she gets there, the housekeeper comes and says the woman isn't available, but she's all excited. Here's the dog. She'll be so grateful. Kelly, oh, well, that was a bust. So she goes back to her store and she's kind of, a little upset because she didn't get any reward and the woman never called her. She gets a phone call from someone in the town who says that their relative has passed away, lives on in this farmhouse outside of town, and he left a key for Kelly to go to the house and find any clothing and jewelry that she wanted to take for the store. He didn't have time to come, so she was free to go take whatever she wanted. So she goes to this deserted farmhouse, as we all would do, isolated, doesn't take anybody with her. And she goes upstairs and finds some clothes that she likes. There weren't that many, but she she just decides to look around, as we would. She finds the body of the lady with the lost dog in the kitchen of this house. She feels, since she found the body and she found the dog, that she needs to solve the mystery. Now, this one also, she does not have a policeman boyfriend. The police, (laughs) the police live in this story is a woman. She doesn't want Kelly buttoned in with her investigation. It was well done. I enjoyed the story. It was a little bit cozy-ish, I'll say, where some shortcuts were taken. I needn't say that the climax is going to happen at the big Halloween party in the town, and it will all get solved by Kelly, of course. But all in all, it was light reading. It was enjoyable. It was, I would read more of these If I needed something, a little escapist reading. It was well done. And I'm a big consignment shop person, so I enjoyed it. This was written by Deborah Senefelder. She is an avid reader. 
who reads across a range of genres, but mystery fiction is her obsession. Her interest in people and relationship is channeled into her novels against a backdrop of crime and mystery. When she's not reading, she's cooking and baking. She's a former food blogger. 